Do you know our purposes are already predetermined by God? So this is what we should be doing. I am fulfilling the purposes of God on the earth. Because really, that's what it is to be a kingdom person. To fulfill God's purpose. And in everything you do, be it your job, be it your vocation, be whatever it is, that you are a, a child of God. And therefore, everything that you do is to his glory, performing to the audience of one, the Lord Jesus. So read, let's read this again. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now look, look at that line. Your kingdom come, your rule and your reign come on earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now in heaven, God's will is perfectly fulfilled. There is no resistance. There's no rebellion in heaven. God has perfect say. His kingdom has perfect uh, dominion. It is here in the earth that men try to push God away and have their will, have their will elevated. But this, is, this prayer is saying quite the opposite. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. In other words, through me. As you as a person praying, there is an understood uh, assumption that you are coming to God because you already have a relationship with him and you want to fulfill his purpose. So when you come in prayer and you say, your kingdom come. In other words, Lord, let your kingdom, let your influence, let your majesty be manifested in the earth through me, your child. So nothing so far deals with a prayer request of, Lord, give this to me, give this to me. Do you know by the time you already follow the pattern of prayer that Jesus outlines here, some of the things you're about to pray about have already been fulfilled or you start, you already set the tone for the fulfillment because you approach God in this order by honoring him. And he, the Bible says he knows everything we need even before we ask them. So he already knows. He already knows that. He, so when we even give prayer requests, it's not like we're telling God something he doesn't already know. But when we come in faith, when we come reverencing him, when we come acknowledging who our source is, that sets us up. That our father is, is his ears, he's listening to us. And he knows that this is a child that believes. This is a child that reverence, reverences me. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.6 so let's go on. Now, now, having established the fact that his kingdom is the object of our prayer, that we want his will to be fulfilled, now we read, give us today our daily bread. In other words, our provision. We've reverenced his name. We don't come. Nobody in a relationship will appreciate a person that the only time you hear from them, the only time you see them is when they have a need. Some of them don't even say hello to you. <laughs> they don't talk to you. But the moment they have a need, they're coming your way. There are people like that. We all know people like that. That they, they, we talked about some time ago about friendships of utility, friendships of character, you know, friendships of pleasure. People you play sports with or utility, you know. It's a very shallow relationship many times. It's not a, the friendship of character that somebody can speak into your life, you can speak into their life, you have, your guards are down. It's not that kind of thing. They only approach you when they have a need. Those kind of relationships after a while seem very, very shallow because they are very shallow. But we want something deeper and God himself wants something deeper. So when we acknowledge him, it's from the heart. That's another thing too. We can't deceive God. God shall not be mocked. Because if we don't have in our hearts that we are really worshiping or serving the Lord, can we really deceive God who is omniscient, who knows all things, who sees our hearts? No, we cannot. So we cannot deceive, uh, we can deceive ourselves, but we cannot deceive God. 
he knows. So when you now say that here in the next statement, give us today our daily bread, our provision. We know, in other words, you are the source. You are the source of all that we need and we come, come to you. And this is in keeping with his nature as provider, his nature as shepherd. All of these things tie together. Give us today our daily bread. Then the next statement says, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. In other words, we are. It, this is also an alignment thing because it's in a place of prayer that our hearts are examined where we are saying to God, forgive. Think about that statement. If you, God is going to fulfill that prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So what if God were to answer that prayer? Will you have your sins and debts forgiven based on how you forgive others? So it's even a heart check there. In other words, I have to examine myself. Am I forgiving? Am I harboring any kind of resentment or hatred or dislike for someone? This is a way in prayer that we pour ourselves out to God and we get rid of that junk that has clogged up our spiritual arteries, as it were. So we said here, forgive us our, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but r deliver us from the evil one. In other words, we live in a realm today in which the God of this world, and with a small g, governs the institutions, governs the atmosphere, governs the culture, governs all the forces of deception in this earth. And we need, his, we need God's spirit. We need his guidance. We need his deliverance from traps, from schemes of the wicked one. And that should also be included in, in our prayer. In other words, as we are fulfilling your kingdom, as we're doing your will, Father, guide our steps by the Holy Spirit. Because this is where the name of God, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. Bible says there that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So when we are allowing God to lead us, when he says lead us not into temptation, what does that mean? The assumption again is that he's doing the leading. He is the shepherd. Because we are bound to fall into temptation when God is not our shepherd. But the moment we acknowledge that we are not the one guiding and leading our lives, but he is leading and guiding our lives, then we can trust him to guide us, to lead us. And even if we're about to go astray or miss the mark, he will call us back. Just like we're about to go off the edge, his Holy Spirit will speak to us and say, no, stop, go this way, turn that way, pause. Be still, be still and know that I am God. So you can see the Lord's Prayer is not something we just recite just to become religious in how we sound in prayer. There are actually principles involved in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Those patterns of prayer apply to us in the use of honoring the name of God. But under the new covenant, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we have a better covenant based on better promises. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 1 with me. I want to read three verses, the first three verses, so we know who Paul is addressing in this uh, passage. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus, and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. It says, who has blessed us? Who has blessed us? We're not trying to be blessed. We are already blessed. And he also tells us here in that verse 3 
that the realm from which our blessing comes is not from the earth. So it's not subject to the shifting patterns in the earth. It's not, it's not subject to the economy of the earth. It's not subject to the political situation and climate of the earth. It's not subject to the limitations of the earth. It's, we're blessed. The Bible says, who hath blessed us? He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, which means it originates from a higher realm. And we don't try to be blessed. We're already blessed. If you turn on your TV and you find out that all the uh, stations are no longer on, you will question whether the transmitter or the receiver. So what do you do? You switch to other channels. You switch to other channels and you see that those channels are still on. But a particular station you're, you're watching is blank. So it could be that the transmitter from that station is off. But what if every channel on your TV is not working? What do you question? You question if the receiver, because you know that there are signals being sent from, a, from the TV station, but you're just not receiving it because something may be wrong with the receiver. In other words, God is the transmitter. He's already transmitted his blessing to us. If we're not receiving, the fault doesn't lie with God. If, if the fault lies with us. So we need to come back and say, what am I not doing right? What is wrong with my receiver? And that's how we receive from God. We need to know what his word says. We have to come from the vantage point that we are already blessed. We don't start asking God for things he's already given us. We come to him thanking him and, and, and calling forth what he has already given us into existence by simply coming to his promises. So if God has already blessed me, I, couldn't, I shouldn't be coming back to God and say, God bless me when he's already blessed me, blessed me already. I should be in a state of thanksgiving. And that's how Jesus even conducted prayer. Watch the prayers of Jesus. You'll see that same pattern. There was a relationship. So he has already given us these things, and that's how we need to approach him. Approach him reverently, approach him respectfully, and also know that God has our best interests at heart. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Vision Guided Life. Remember this, transformation takes place through identification with Christ. God bless you. Remember to like, subscribe, and click on the bell so you will never miss any episode from our channel. God bless you.